on this episode of Game Changers. I had five examining rooms. I was going from one room to the other and they were filled with young athletes with what I call adult injuries. I said, my goodness, what's going on here? The game is always changing. In this series, we take a look at those who are changing the sports world on and off the field. I'm your host, Armin Amirian, and this is Game Changers, presented by T-Mobile. I'm Armin Amirian here in Gulf Breeze, Florida to meet with a legend in sports medicine, Dr. James Andrews. And I'm here to find out why after 40 years of fixing injuries in professional athletes, he's shifting his focus to preventing injuries in youth athletes. Dr. James Andrews is no ordinary orthopedic surgeon. His client list is a who's who of some of the best athletes in the world. He's made a name for himself as a pioneer in sports medicine, and he continues to find ways to make sports safer for athletes everywhere and at every age. Hey, good afternoon. Nice to meet you, Dr. Andrews. Good to see you. So, Dr. Andrews, what originally brought you to Gulf Breeze? I was in Birmingham, Alabama at our sports center up there. They came and got me to develop one down here, and next thing I knew, here I was. Tell me a little bit about what this big issue with youth sports is. There's been a seven to ten fold increase in youth sports injuries since year 2000. That's in all 29 youth sports. And it's associated with two things. Number one is specialization, where they play in one sport year round. The other thing is professionalism. That means taking these young kids and treating them like they're professional athletes. So those two things together has created this epidemic in youth sports. The rapid increase of youth injuries got the attention of Dr. Andrews. It's a unique person that sees and knows when it's time to step in and cause change. What was it that encouraged you to start looking into this? Well, in my sports medicine practice, I had five examining rooms where I'd see new patients on Monday morning. And all of a sudden, instead of seeing college and pro athletes, I was going from one room to the other and they were filled with young athletes with what I call adult injuries. I said, my goodness, what's going on here? What was the attitude that was bringing in suddenly all these youth into your, into your clinic? Well, it's the uh, culture of youth sports. They start recruiting these young kids when they're in the first and second grade to play year-round youth baseball. Well, parents, of course, buy into that, and then, of course, they gear their kid toward that elite sport year-round, and they overtrain and they get hurt. We recommend that you not specialize in a single sport until you're at least a senior in high school. But if we can just get the message out, then maybe we can do something to curtail this epidemic that we're seeing in youth sports. Dr. Andrew's message is clear. Don't overtrain the body before it's fully developed. But Dr. Andrews knows that in order for change to happen, he also needs help on the front lines. Today, we're also gonna get a chance to meet some of the athletic trainers that are working with the football team. What role do those athletic trainers play in this greater picture of reducing and preventing youth injuries? Without them there, little small minor injuries are then ignored, neglected, and compounded to become major injuries. So the coaches then, if they don't have a trainer, are really taking on a responsibility that they're not trained to do. But a lot of places, that's what's happened because of budgetary restraints. What's up, Justin? How are you? Good, thanks, man. So tell me what you're doing here right now with these kids. So essentially I'm just making sure that nobody gets hurt, you know, doing preventative measures. If somebody's tackling the wrong way, I'll go up to them and be like, hey man, you know, next time make sure that you hit with your head up. And if somebody goes down, I'm right here with them. So I see the injury happen, it's the best time to get an evaluation and it's right after the injury. Athletic trainers are crucial to injury prevention. Due to lack of public funding, the Andrews Institute is providing trainers at no cost to high schools in Florida. Tell me a little bit about that athletic training program. Well, we have 23 high schools in the Pensacola area where we provide athletic training full-time to at least 23 high schools. That just shows you the problem, though. We shouldn't have to provide them 
We should be mandated that they work full time for the high school through public education. But unfortunately, that hadn't happened. Pro football players aren't the only ones suffering risky concussions. One in 14 high school players will suffer at least one concussion each season. Tell me what role the athletic trainers might play specifically regarding head injuries. We used to say, well, he just had a ding. He'll be all right in five minutes. He's back playing and he has a second concussion. Now, if you have any thought of a kid having a concussion, he's out of the game. Early recognition is the thing that's really been the most important step we've had in sports medicine in years, and that's just happened over the last three or four years. So that's the responsibility of the athletic trainer. So what would have happened before you guys were embedded here with the athletes? Worst case scenario would be that a kid sustained a concussion. You know, the coaches didn't know what to do, didn't know how to manage it. But, you know, the kid goes back in and he could uh, sustain what's called second impact syndrome. And second impact syndrome is essentially a second concussion that, that happens when the brain's not fully healed. Basically what happens is it starts swelling up and then you have to go to emergency surgery where the child can either die or they can be permanently uh, crippled. Having an athletic trainer can mean the difference between life and death, and yet a large percentage of schools are without a full-time trainer. So how are the current state of things in regards to athletic trainers across the nation? It's getting better, but we still have a problem. In our public high schools across the United States, at this point, about 70% of them have some type of athletic trainer, but only about 37% of those are full-time. So we have a long ways to go certifying athletic trainers in all public high schools. What was it like in 2010 when you were named one of the most influential people in all of sport? It was a great honor. With the honor comes responsibility to do something about what's going on in sports too. And, and I've taken it seriously. I've done enough putting Humpty Dumpty back together again, meaning surgical techniques, but in the twilight of my career, if I could really be known for prevention of injuries in youth sports, but across the board in all sports and all ages, uh, that would be the greatest honor I could ever achieve. I mean, if you see kids that are permanently injured, it drives you to get into prevention. So it's a burning desire to see them have a healthy life and to see them reach their ultimate potential as an athlete too. Thank you very much, Thank y'all. Today, I not only got a chance to talk to Dr. James Andrews, but I also got to see his vision in action. All of us would expect a guy who's accomplished what he's accomplished would retire, but this man is still driven to make things better for the next generation of athletes.